Hello, everybody. So your question for form time today is quite quite a big question, quite a difficult question, quite a controversial question. Should you tolerate the intolerant? You've got some extremists, people there, who admire the Nazis and they've actually put the Nazi swastika inside the Union Jack. Some people would be absolutely appalled by that and, and would say, you know, those kind of views, you should not tolerate those people at all. That is completely off anything. It's off the radar. I mean, you should not have views like that tolerated or to in any sense. Well, what do you think? If you say that we should tolerate ideas in a free and democratic society, doesn't that mean all ideas? Interesting contrast between this picture and this picture. S -s Some of the, these people are extreme right wing, but they're not waving swastikas. They're not pretending to be Nazis. They're not pretending to be admirers of Hitler. They're claiming to be patriotic, patriots. And they're against the far left, who they see as being behind political c correctness. And they think that Britain is being flooded by too much immigration. So they say migration chaos. Now that is different to that. Because that is you know, out and out support for the Nazis. This is having views which are controversial, but shouldn't they have the right to put over those views and to go on a protest with those views? You see, they, they, they can send, send to be patriotic. They've got the Union Jack. They've got the Cross of St. George, if they're English. Some of them might be Welsh or Scottish. Most of them are probably English, but w w w whatever. The idea would be, the argument would be <clears throat> that these people have the right to their view. Their views might shock people, they might offend people, but in a way, in a free and democratic society, sometimes do we not have to listen to views that we completely disagree with? If you just have the idea that you that you tolerate views that you um, support or do not challenge in any sense, then that seems to be a little bit too safe. In a free society, surely we have the right to say what we want as long as we don't actually um, uh, uh, as long as we don't actually use physical violence. Remember that any kind of physical violence is against the common law of the land and the police will deal with that anyway. So, is there a difference between free speech and hate speech? I think I've shown you this uh, slide before. And I think I said last time that hate speech was completely out and completely wrong, but there is a problem with that. And the problem is, where do you draw the line? If it's out and out hatred and racism, fair enough. But if you take something like Islamophobia, if people are protesting because they think that terrorists who have an Islamic background are being treated too softly by the justice system, they've been let out of prison and then they've committed another terrorist attack. Is that hate speech? It's not saying I hate all Muslims, but it's saying there is a problem with the Islamic faith and that there are extremists within there and we're against the extremists. Is that hate speech or is it free speech? Have a think about that. Now, some people say, no, you can't tolerate the far right because ultimately they don't believe in democracy themselves. If they were given half the chance, they would use their terrorist tactics 
in pursuit of their political goals. And you can see there that is obviously something which the police would not tolerate at all because that is a paramilitary uniform worn by this member of, of the far right. And that's a very different kettle of fish from peaceful protests like that. So therefore you could say we could tolerate that, but not that. The anti-racists and the anti-fascists also point out that Hitler was tolerated in the German society when it was a democracy before 1933 and he got to power through democracy. He was voted into power. The Nazis were the most successful political party in terms of winning seats in the German parliament. And then he destroyed democracy and obviously we know what happened in terms of the dictatorship that he set up after that. So the argument would be you can't tolerate any of these views because that could lead to that. Once you start to tolerate those views, it can lead to that. A few years ago, and I think it was quite a while ago now, when Nick Griffin was leader of the BNP, which is a far-right group. He was allowed on the Thursday evening question time, which was then chaired by David Dimbubby. And you can see it's end of October or November time because they've got the poppies on. Now, some people said you can't allow someone like Nick Griffin, who represents the BNP, to come on uh, a television program and give his views along with views which are accepted conservative labor liberal etc his views are so far away from what is acceptable he should not be allowed but he was allowed the bbc said we can give him some space he had he had a very he had a very rough time all the other people on the panel they grilled him and they 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 criticized him and and he he had a tough time he had a tough time with the audience as well and he felt that he was being picked on but he didn't put up a good job he didn't put in a good performance and people said that his abhorrent views his nasty racist views were laid bare before people on television. And we assume that, you know, large numbers of people watch Question Time on Thursday evening. And that actually was good for democracy because his views were seen as completely wrong, as completely un unacceptable. And it is far better to deal with people like that, to allow them free speech, but then to be very, very critical of them and to, you know, uh, and to really um, expose them in front of the British people than it is to ban them. If you ban them, you create a kind of a martyr culture. They start to complain about, about unfairness and so forth, and that they're being picked on and that the liberal elite don't want to hear controversial views. So it's this thing about how far do we tolerate those who do have intolerant views? Can we tolerate the intolerant? So what do you think? You've got a far right demonstrator there. He could be the BNP, he could be Britain first or whatever. And he's talking to somebody who is a Muslim and they don't look as if the conversation is that friendly. But at the end of the day, as long as there's no threats or physical violence, does the person on the right have the right to express his views? Would the person on the left see it as free speech or hate speech? We don't know what he's saying. But you might imagine that it comes more into the hate speech rather than the free speech. But if
if he's not threatening, if he's not uh, using, if he's not using violence, then does he have the right to say what he thinks? It's up to you. Have a discussion now with your form tutor. Thank you very much.